If you were a content creator dreaming big in the early days of YouTube, the idea was that you wanted to make a career out of making YouTube videos. But until Google's acquisition of YouTube and running of ads on the platform, that was a giant question mark. But then along comes Google and AdSense and the idea of being able to earn money as a profit share from Google as they negotiated their ad rates started to become a reality for an awful lot of content creators where you saw the rise of a lot of different channels. However, if you were, say, a video game content creator, just as a matter of example, and this isn't the only category where this was true, you wouldn't be able to make money off of ads that would run on your videos. The reason being is that Google was too nervous to run ads on those types of videos directly for fear that video game developers would end up making constant copyright claims on content that was generated around and about their video games. Now, fast forward a number of years, and we know that that's not the case anymore. And since about 2016, video game content creators have been able to directly monetize their videos right along. But in the early days, if you were a category of content creator that Google viewed as too risky to run ads on, the only way that you would be able to make any money off of those videos that you made, spent all of that time on and were hoping to monetize, was to join what is called an MCN, or multi-channel network. And above all, the biggest and best multi-channel network out there is, or was, at the time, BBTV. BBTV and its CEO, Shahrazad Rafati, was began somewhere around 2005 with the intention of doing a couple of different things. The first was primarily to be able to bridge the gap between content owners and content creators, basically creating an avenue between the content claimant, the person that actually owned the content that the video was being made about, and the content creator that was making videos about their stuff. That way, if there was a copyright claim, there could at least be some angle of revenue sharing for the content owner and for the content creator, at least in an ideal world. That had since branched off into other avenues of monetization, with the largest one being BBTV's ability to use content creators as a bargaining collective. In the earliest days of YouTube, the best way to go about bargaining for ad revenue, especially if you were a channel that couldn't directly monetize with Google, was you had to join an MCN. These MCNs would then go to market and negotiate with brands on Google's behalf, let's say, and on the content creator's behalf, to make it okay for content creators to make, say, a video about a video game. Let's say for the sake of example, you're a content creator that loves the game Grand Theft Auto. Well, in this case, BBTV would go to the producer, the owner of Grand Theft Auto's license, and make sure that it was okay for you to be able to make a video about Grand Theft Auto, in which case your channel would then be okay to be monetized if you did Grand Theft Auto videos, let's say, and BBTV would work out a deal where they would take 30% of the ad revenue and you would get 70. Something is obviously better than nothing and you're getting the lion's share, so obviously that works out. The other thing that an MCN was primarily good at was finding ad revenue sources. So they would go and negotiate out rates with brands specifically to put on their member channels as a bargaining collective. It's the same kind of thing that small little insurance companies would do. They would get together as a collective and say, well, we as a large group have so many clients that it gives us a little bit more bargaining power so we can guarantee that you would have some level of an amount of eyeball we could guarantee at least this much would see your brand if you advertise across our entire channel network. And for that, again, they would take a 30% cut, but they would negotiate a higher rate than what is typical because they're trying to give some minimal level of guarantee, which is something that Google across its vast, expansive YouTube channels couldn't necessarily do. So it was a way for them to target and then micro-target and further micro-target even on specific channel basises by individualized representation, ways for YouTube channels and their content creators to earn a better living. Now, as time went on, the need for an MCN started slowly dwindling away. And other monetization options that came along from YouTube, like channel memberships that were started in 2018, started eroding at the ability for an MCN to make itself justified. BBTV CEO Sharzad Rafati, who at one point in time on July 8th of 2021, was featured in an article for tech news startups on why ethical business decisions are good business decisions, decided to try and pull a fast one. 
See, BBTV, like other MCNs, has a very large, vast member network comprising of hundreds of millions of views per month at this point in time. Although, much recently, it seems as though their viewership is down now that people are kind of getting back to life as normal thanks to COVID having subsided, but we'll get more on that in just a second. Among BBTV's extremely large network of member channels were the channels H3H3 Productions, actually all of Ethan Klein's associated channels, and the channel Yo Mama. Now, when they came along, back in 2017, they were offered an interesting, I guess, membership. See, they weren't stupid over at BBTV. They decided that it would be a good idea for the monthly viewership associated with channels like these to be part of their network, if only because then it could be used as a bargaining chip. Remember, they're a bargaining collective, so if they're able to show we get so many videos per month, wouldn't you love to be featured on these channels? It would give them the ability to bargain for better rates for everyone. It also gave them another ability to be able to negotiate on behalf of those specific channels individually so that they could end up getting paid on very, very specific sponsorships. More money, more revenue, everybody wins. So they made an interesting deal. In the case of both H3H3 and Yo Mama, they were given a 100% split. They would take, meaning BBTV, would take zero money from either of those channels or their associated channels. That way, BBTV would be able to negotiate out other deals for them. They wouldn't take any of the AdSense money, but they would take money from other deals that they were able to make for them. And they also would be able to use that amount of viewership that they got as part of their bargaining collective. And in the case of Ethan and Yo Mama, they both agreed that that would be a good idea. But this was back in 2016 and 2017. Channel memberships, where you can pay X amount of dollars per month to support your favorite channel creator, of which I happen to be somebody that you can do that should you want to, allows for a supporter to compensate the creator directly. And Google, for that, takes a pretty minimal cut. But channel memberships didn't exist in the contract terms back in 2017 because they weren't introduced until somewhere in the summer time of 2018. So what did BBTV do? Well, in the cases of H3H3 and Yo Mama, they decided to take a 30% cut because it wasn't outlined in the contract. Now, naturally, in Ethan Klein's case, he decided he was going to take this to the court of public opinion and argue that, well, this money's been stolen from me. How much money? Over $600,000 over the last few years. It's quite a bit of money. It's a pretty large chunk of change. In BBTV's position, once this was found, nah, we're gonna keep it. It's not yours, it's ours. Because as defined in your contract, nothing ever mentioned memberships. So we're keeping it. Now, to Ethan's credit, he actually ended up self-leaking about a 15-minute section of a conversation that he and his wife had with an executive at BBTV, of which apparently the CEO didn't want to have a conversation with him, but I digress, where they went through the contract almost to the letter and tried to explain why it was that Ethan wasn't entitled to the money that he says that he was. By saying that Google net revenue, for instance, saying that BBTV was going to pay them the 100% that they had agreed on was defined very specifically in the contract terms, saying that the net revenue would be paid minus Google's fees and associated taxes, of course, and that all the money was going to be flowing through the MCN. Now, see, that's an interesting piece of how MCNs work. Remember, this was created because Google was too nervous to pay the content creators directly for fear of copyright claims. So all of the revenue, even if it comes from memberships, all gets put in the same bucket, and that bucket gets paid directly to the MCN on the 21st of every month, just like all the other content creators get. But then the MCN has to pay out from that point on to the content creator delaying even further the time that it takes for a content creator to get paid. How much longer, you ask? It's net 45. So day of the end of the month, end of the month closes, you have another 45 day wait before it changes. Uh, actually, no, wait, I take that back. Uh, they actually just sent out an email about a week ago saying that now it's going to be net 60 plus the end of week. So instead of being paid on the 15th of March for something that you finished doing at the end of January, you now are going to be paid until the end of the first week of April. Where their reasoning behind which is because the economic environment that we're in is kind of nervous right now and Silicon Valley Bank closed even though that doesn't have anything to do with us but we're still only going to pay you net 60 plus end of week just sorry that's just how it's going to be from now on because we want to make sure that we're financially secure and I'm sure that doesn't have anything to do with the 97 percent decrease in their stock value as of today end of business close today I'm sure it doesn't have anything
anything to do with the 97% drop in stock value or the 16 plus million dollars worth of US currency that they took as a venture cap loan um, from a venture capital firm that says that that has to be paid back over the course of four years quarterly at a 16% annual rate of interest. Yeah, I'm sure that no, that doesn't have anything to do with it. No, I'm sure I'm sure it's just the safety. It's a safety precaution. Sa safety. Of course, in BBTV's contract, they also outline that they're going to take their 30% revenue cut on anything they bring to the table, which is, I think, fair. But they then go on to explain why the Google membership piece doesn't count. Because in the contract, they actually outline Google subscriptions. Because they talk about how YouTube at the time had YouTube Red, which is now YouTube Premium, which when it was originally conceived was an idea for the person, the end user that was watching YouTube videos at the time, YouTube videos weren't always something that you could just go and grab from YouTube at any point in time to watch old ones. They were kind of held in limbo for a little while and you could watch them for a certain number of days, but then they would kind of go into this archival system. Well, YouTube Red and YouTube Premium came along and the original purpose was if I pay X amount of dollars per month, I can go back and look at the back catalog and watch these videos whenever I want. Now that obviously got expanded for the rest of us to be able to do that whenever we want and YouTube Premium evolved into something that was more along the lines of ad free viewing instead but originally the idea of the youtube subscription was to be able to watch the content and archive content as much and as often as we wanted to and that's where they tried to say they got you because YouTube subscriptions being a monthly fee was only supposed to be for that archival viewing and not necessarily for the membership side, which is something that was being directly paid to the content creator as a, a way to get some extra benefits. But here's the rub. And this is why Ethan wins, by the way. On the side of Google, if you go to the membership section and you actually decide to pay for a membership and look at what it is that you're paying for on the membership side of things, they don't even break that out into memberships. The subsection, the category of the revenue that is going out of your wallet to the content creator is listed under the subheading of subscriptions, where they talk about how they might share subscription data that doesn't personally identify you with developers to help them offer subscriptions. And then it will list the subscriptions for the channels that you are subscribed to as channel memberships. So even in its own subheadings, Google ends up categorizing these memberships as subscriptions. And when you pay for a membership, like my membership that has been ongoing ever since Dr. Lupo moved over to YouTube, it says, thank you. Your subscription from Google Commerce Limited on Google Play continues and you've been charged. Manage your subscriptions. So again, it's through the subscription system. And this is, of course, regardless of your personal feelings for the political stances of someone like Ethan Klein, or the things that he's done over the years. I don't give a rat's ass about any of that stuff. This is specifically about business and shady business practices. What it looks like to me is that MCNs, especially now BBTV, which again was the shining example of what an MCN should be like and was touted as being fantastic for most of the creators that have been involved with them, is now falling on its face. In their earliest financial report, they reported a massive loss, like some 22% revenue loss year over year from last year, attributing this primarily to COVID-related issues. But there is a silver lining to this story, and that's the most important thing I think here. Because as of about an hour ago, Ethan Klein ended up tweeting out that he was actually finally going to be paid by the folks over at BBTV. They caved and decided that they're going to pay him the money that he's owed, which is a great thing. Unfortunately, I don't know if the staying power of this MCN is going to last. Everything that this company has points toward financial ruin. They are falling apart financially from every conceivable angle. My only hope is, is the content creators that are involved with them are able to get their paychecks out of this company before the company folds. And if I were somebody involved with BBTV, my priority right now would be in making sure that I got paid for the things that I've done in the process of making sure that I become decoupled from that MCN as fast as I possibly can in order to make sure that I'm directly paid by Google instead of having to deal with the network paying my paychecks if the network suddenly declares bankruptcy, which is extremely likely considering the history of MCNs that predated or were around BBTV leading up through till now.
Anyway, guys, that's what I have for today. That's the story. If you would like more information, news, and stuff like that to go along with your day, please consider subscribing to the channel. It really, really does matter. Thank you guys so much for lending me your eyeballs. Please follow me over at twitch.tv slash one peg, and I will see you in the next one, okay? Peace.